What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, and today it's time for another T3 Power Ranking. Now, we've done T3 Power Rankings in the past on this channel where we've taken a look at various types of watches within a certain price range and I give them each a rank, or we've taken a look at, you know, uh, specific complications within a certain price range and I give it, you know, letter rank from S to F. S being the best, F being the worst. I'm a weeb, we're doing this in like JRPG style fashion, but today we're doing something a little bit different, okay? When we're looking at orology as a whole, you can't really get too far into the hobby without coming across the word complication, all right? And today we're gonna be, ta we're gonna be talking about and actually ranking complications themselves. Now, what is a watch complication? Well, according to the internet, a wristwatch complication or a complication on a timepiece is any function that exists in addition to time telling, okay? So the hour hand, the second hand, the minute hand, those aren't considered timepiece complications, but any function other than that, or in addition to that, would be considered a complication. Now, my channel members, my certified T3 bots, the people over on my T3 Discord chat, again, members only, if you want to support the channel, uh, click the join button next to the subscribe button, and that's $4.99, and you get access to that members only Discord chat. They picked 13 timepiece complications that I'm going to be giving a letter rank. Again, S being the best, F being the worst and um, it's pretty pretty good sampling honestly and and I think a lot of these are cool we're gonna talk about them as it goes on but let's just go ahead and jump into the episode it is 2 15 p.m. let's get down to business all right the first one that my channel members chose. And again, this isn't in order of how I will rank them. This is just in order of the list and I'm gonna give them whichever grade I think they deserve. Uh, or Rattrapont, uh, which is a catch up chronograph. Catch up chronograph. It's a chronograph with, with two hands, right? Um, and they have a lot of really cool watches. IWC makes chronographs. Uh, I think um, the, the Portuguese chronograph that I wanted has a Rattrapont. Uh, iteration that you can choose from. It's much more expensive than a normal chronograph because it is an additional complication on top of just your normal chronograph complication. So when you hit the chronograph start, both hands will move and then you hit another button and one stops, the other one keeps going, then you hit another button and that uh, that chronograph hand that initially stopped catches up with the other one and essentially it's like you can do split timing, um, you can keep track of uh, multiple times, okay? It's, it's functional, I guess, in specific settings. I only ever use my chronograph for like, I don't know, again, I, I only ever time like my pizza rolls in my oven, so who, I'm maybe, I'm not the right person to ask about like functionality here. I do think it's cool. I don't think it's much cooler than a normal chronograph and chronograph isn't on the list yet. So for Retrapon, I'm gonna give it C. I'm gonna give it a C. And again, that, that may sound harsh, but C is kind of solid guys, okay? So it's cool, not the coolest, doesn't excite me a ton. And guys, I urge you at home to, to make your own list and comment it. The next would be Equation of Time, okay? Equation of Time keeps track of uh, true solar time and mean solar time. So nature's time and man-made time. It's kind of woo-woo and out there and the watches look really freaking cool. Would I really ever use this complication? No, but that's not necessarily how I'm using, like... My bearing on, on what is cool or what isn't cool doesn't necessarily correlate to what is truly functional. So again, you're going to be confused as to how I come up with these rankings, but it's my channel and it's my f***ed up head. So I'm just, might be cool, might be functional, might not be functional. And I just think it's awesome. Who knows? I think this is really cool. It's not my all time favorite complication, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a B. Next up would be Deadbeat Seconds. Shout out to Brandon, the host of Watch Cringe. His Instagram handle is Deadbeat Seconds. Deadbeat Seconds is funny and controversial. I know you wouldn't think watch complications are contro controversial, but in my five plus years of being the time teller, wristwatches start a lot more arguments than you'd think. It's crazy. People take them very, very seriously. So of course people would argue and be offended by and be upset about various 
watch complications, Deadbeat Seconds being the top one. What is Deadbeat Seconds? Well, it essentially turns your mechanical watch into a quartz watch. What do I mean by that? Well, um, you know, mechanical watches typically have a higher beat frequency with the second hand uh, when you compare them to quartz watches, which tick, tick, tick. And people sometimes don't like the tick, tick, tick tick of a quartz watch and they want the smoother sweep of a mechanical watch. Well, Deadbeat Seconds take your mechanical watch and adds another gear which ticks the second hand. Why would you ever want this? Well, this is actually kind of an older complication. It's not anything new and it's actually not all that common nowadays, but people put these on things like doctor's watches and stuff because they thought that it would give you a more accurate measurement of seconds as they elapse. So instead of you having to kind of keep track of the sweep of a watch with a higher beat frequency, you could really be paying attention to the ticks on the watch. And again, it's not quartz, it's mechanical, but it's not as pretty looking as a, you know, higher beat frequency. I don't find it to be super useful. I don't find it to be all that functional, but I think it's really cool. And I'm gonna give this B. I'm gonna give this a B. That's right, this is above the Uatua Pound. I can't pronounce anything, so I apologize. Now guys, we should note, as I mention these complications, you're gonna be seeing images of my favorite watches that utilize these complications. If you have any questions about these watches, leave them in the comment section, we can talk about them. The next up would be the also controversial power reserve indicator. Interesting, this is one that I, dude, when it comes to things I mention regularly, like as I review watches, this is probably the number one complication that I get the most hate over, all right? And, and it's not like personal hate. It's not like people are like, I hate you because you showed me a power reserve indicator. No, it's, it's people like hate this complication. I think it's really useful and I think it's pretty cool depending on how it's displayed, right? You could have the coolest complication in the world and if it's not displayed in a beautiful way, I know it's kind of subjective, then, then of course I'm not going to like it. Assuming the power reserve indicator is done tastefully, I think it's a very useful complication. I think it's a really cool complication to see how much juice your watch has at any given time. I think that people like Creator do it very, very nicely with the Aichi 2. They put it on the back side of the watch so you can see it through the display case back. Um, but again, on the Aichi 1, or the Aichi, it was on that porcelain dial and it looks, it just looks gorgeous. So I'm gonna give this an A. I love power reserve indicators. I, I'm gonna give it an A. Next up, perpetual calendar. Now, some orologists claim this is as complicated as a watch can get. Um, some people are like, oh, you, you need to bring this to a watchmaker to get set. You can't leave your perpetual calendar off a winder because if it dies, ooh, you're gonna have to bring it in and they're gonna have to set it for you. And blah, 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 blah. I think most of the time, perpetual calendar watches look really cool. I don't own any because uh, they're typically incredibly uh, expensive, like let's be honest, it's, it's incredibly complicated, puts out a lot of information, and um, yeah, it's it's pricey. All the perpetual calendars I want are like five figure watches minimum. Yeah, really cool complication. Again though, not my favorite. I think I, I can't give it below a B, but I also can't give it above a B, so I'm gonna give it a B. <laughs> What a weird way of saying I'm giving this a B. Next up, Jump Hour. Man, Jump Hour watches. I reviewed one Jump Hour from Chris Ward. Uh, had a beautiful louvered cut at the 12 o'clock. Uh, that was the hour. And then it had a minute hand, a single hand. Uh, really cool. That's actually one of my favorite Jump Hour watches. And ever since I got that one uh, in my hot little hands, I, I, I like fell in love with this complication. I'm going to tell you right now, this is an A complication because I think it's really freaking cool. Um, and when you pay attention to the watch as it's about to jump and you see it click in the place, it's just, it's so satisfying. It's like, it's like a little treat whenever you uh, encounter it, whenever you're able to witness it. And so I, I love jump hour watches. And so, yeah, I'm gonna give this an A. Now when we're talking about art horology and um, just high-end expensive watchmaking, it's hard to speak about it without also thinking about, or at least hearing, Torion. 
right? What is a tourbillon? Why is it so expensive? Do you need one? Essentially, a tourbillon allows you to keep your watch accurate and regulated no matter how the watch is oriented, or so they say. Honestly, a tourbillon is just a show of force. It's something really interesting to look at, and um, I, it's not necessary. I'm going to tell you right now, it is not necessary. I think some are incredibly just wackadoo, crazy, impressive, like JLC's Gyro Tourbillon, and there are some that are very simple and tasteful, like the um, Vacheron uh, Traditionnel uh, Patrimony. The, the Tourbillon Patrimony, which which is, I, I think, a gorgeous watch. Again, a little bit more simple. Well, I guess simple when you compare it to the Gyro Tourbillon, but anything simple when you compare it to the Gyro Tourbillon. This is hard, because there are some Tourbillon watches that I really do like, but I'm also thinking, like, this is, I've never been super, super driven with the desire that, like, I need a Tourbillon watch, so that makes it less cool to me, right? Like, the deadbeat seconds are, are really interesting and quirky. And the jump hour, it's like, I, I love that. I, I, but Torbjorn, I think some, I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, it has a Torbjorn. That's cool. But, it, but if that's the only thing about a watch, I'm not going to be that interested. So the Vacheron, Patrimony Traditionnel Torbjorn, that is a watch that's been on my grail list. And I think it's really beautiful. I like how they integrated the Vacheron cross uh, on the Torbjorn. But I'm, I'm, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm going to give it a C. I got to give it a C. I don't think it's all that cool, but it's, it's solid. Next up, day date. Now, my, my members, the, the certified T3 bots put day date next to each other. I'm actually going to separate it. We're going to say day first. Uh, day, I'm going to give a C and date, I'm going to give S. That's right, this is the first S of the day, because the date complication, assuming it's portrayed nicely, not at the 4.30, only at the 6 o'clock or the 3 o'clock, then it's got to be an S, because it is probably, in my opinion, the most useful complication a watch can have. You very rarely forget the day of the week, but you regularly have to double check the date of the week or of the month, I should say the date of the week, the date of the month. Um, so that's why for me personally, at least that's that's how I function. I, I regularly uh, remember which day it is, but I regularly also forget the date. So I'm gonna give date S. It's just functional, looks nice. If they do it properly, again, that's the, that's the one, it's, got, it's gotta be done. A. Hey, it's gotta, my, my, oh. God, I've been moaning a lot more in my episodes, what the? Next up, the regatta timer. Okay, I've, I've reviewed personally one regatta timer from Boulder. Um, what is a regatta timer? It's something fancy schmancy for a really specific small tiny group of people that own yachts and that race those yachts, okay? So out of the people that own a yacht, that's already a tiny portion, and then out of those people that race yachts, that's an even smaller portion, and yes, those people would have things like the Yacht Master 2, which has a regatta timer, or that Boulder, which has a regatta timer. There's a few other watches that have dedicated regatta timers, and it's something uh, that times your split, um, your, your I don't even know what you call it, pushing off during the race. It's, it's, I would never actually use one because I don't own a yacht, and if I did own a yacht, I probably wouldn't race it. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe when I own a yacht, I'll tell you about it. But um, I think some of them look pretty cool. I'm going to give it a D, though, because I just, I don't, it's not ever something that I'm like, ooh, I, I need a watch with a regatta timer. I actually do like the Yacht Master 2, though. I, it grew on me. I, at first, I thought it was like a Guy Fieri watch because Guy Fieri literally does own a Yacht Master 2. But the more I've seen him in person, I'm like, okay, this is kind of badass. But yeah, I'm still going to give it a D because I don't think it's that cool of a complication, personally. Next up, minute repeater. Okay, at one point, might still be, I don't know, I'm gonna have to ask my watchmaker. This was considered the most expensive complication to make. It is a chime, essentially. But when you get down to the history of this complication, it's actually very respectable and um, compassionate. And, and it's, it's weird to, to speak of a watch complication as being compassionate, but 
This was originally introduced on timepieces for people that uh, had poor vision or were blind. Uh, it's because you can't read a timepiece if you have uh, vision impairment, and uh, so you'd have to rely on your hearing. And this is where the various chimes and bells come into play, uh, denoting the hours and minutes. And I think that it's really, really cool. I think it's incredibly complicated, or excuse me, incredibly expensive when you when you're speaking of complications. Still, one of the most expensive complications to buy. Uh, I don't know if it's one of the most expensive complications to produce, but definitely to buy. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and tell you: don't Google the blanc pain minute repeater. Do not. Do not Google image search the blanc pain minute repeater all right do not go ahead open up your browser in incognito mode and google blanc pain minute repeater do not do it but if you do do it you have to be 18 years or older please it's not because of that watch that i'm going to give this a high ranking but i'm going to go ahead and give this an a i think it's it's a really respectable cool complication i've never owned one i don't know if i ever will own one um but yeah a i think it's it's functional has a very compassionate useful respectable history and uh yeah i dig it next up chronograph now this is essentially a glorified stopwatch on the wrist. Again, I've made an episode about uh, the history of chronographs. I've made an episode about what is a chronograph. I have a whole dedicated playlist on my channel talking about chronographs. So click up here and uh, you can watch the chronograph playlist. But yeah, I, th I think this is one of the most accessible complications as far as learning about them, right? Like you learn about watches, Typically, when you get into the hobby, probably the first thing you see is like a dive watch. But then after that, you're like, what are those extra knobs on some watches? And you're like, oh, that's a chronograph. So it might not be the most accessible as far as owning. I think the most accessible complication to own is probably a day complication. But next up would be chronograph because, again, it, they're just very common. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this glorified stopwatch a B. I like it. I, I'm... I'm I'm a fan, and again, it's it's a step above the retrepant. So yeah, next up, GMT. So GMT is super duper useful if you travel a whole lot or if you keep track of another time zone anywhere. So for instance, uh, I have my GMTs set uh, for GMT for UK time because I just have a huge percentage of viewership in the UK and I wanna keep tabs on you guys. Uh, I think I have another watch set to Tokyo, to Japan, <laughs> and I think it's really fun, even when I'm not traveling, to have the ability to track two different time zones. It's just, again, very, very nice. But if you're someone who doesn't travel a lot or you have no need to keep track of another time zone, this probably wouldn't even be on your radar and you probably won't think it's that cool. But again, if you can imagine keeping track of not one, but two time zones with one watch, it's pretty dope. UTC, I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring that along with GMT, although they're technically different and people argue that UTC is a more accurate display of time than GMT, all you time nerds. I'm gonna say that they're both the same for the sake of this power ranking. So UTC, GMT, keeping track of another time zone. I love GMT. Still not my favorite complication. I'm going to give GMT a B because I do think it's super useful and really cool to track multiple time zones with one watch. So there you have it, guys. Again, if you have any questions on the watches that you saw during this episode, ask them in the comment section. I'll do my best to respond to you. But yeah, all the watches that you saw uh, during this episode were my favorite interpretations or uses or um, watches harnessing the power of each complication we mentioned today. So yeah, I think that all of this is kind of subjective, obviously, because this is my channel and it's coming from my brain. I also think that it's going to be very subjective for you when you're taking a look at like what is useful to you or what you use day to day or what's even in your wheelhouse. Like for instance, Torbjörn's minute repeaters, that's not in my wheelhouse because I don't like I don't have the capital to buy one of the, a watch with those things right now right I'm not gonna go to my AD and be like hey give me a minute repeater 
Like, it's, it's just not happening. I also don't have a huge use for a minute repeater. I, I don't have the best vision, but I'm not, like, losing it steadily. And then things like the regatta timer, again, not only is that not in my wheelhouse, I have zero use for it. But things like the, like a chronograph, things like a GMT, day date for sure, I do use those. And it's funny how when you have a watch with a complication, you might not think you'd use it all that often, but the second you get it on your wrist, you find yourself, you know, paying attention to it more and using it a whole lot. Like, in general, I don't have much use to time things. But when I have my chronographs on my wrist, I'm like timing things all the time because it's just, it's kind of like a fidget toy, right? It's something that you use, just some fun thing to play with. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's the love of watches, right? That's why we have these silly things on our wrists. Now, we should mention, you can, like, all the things that we spoke about today, you can find in mechanical watches. But, you can find some of these complications in quartz watches, specifically digital watches, like this non-G-Shock Casio twin sensor. Whole lot of functionality, and maybe we're going to power rank functions instead of complications in a future episode. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But yeah, this thing has thermometer, digital compass, it has a chronograph, it has, I think, multiple time zones, um, backlight, I don't know if we can even consider that a complication, but it is a function outside of time telling. But yeah, you can get a whole lot of bang per buck just going with a digital watch and you'll get most of the, oh, and it has chimes. So yeah, you're going to get like most of these complications in a watch that's like 40 bucks. And I'm going to leave a affiliate link to this watch in the description below. When you use that link, uh, we do get a, a kickback from Amazon. So we really do appreciate it. Guys, let me know what you would like me to power rank in the near future and we can make it happen. And if you want to join the conversation over on Discord, again, become a channel member, $4.99 a month. That's what's allowed me to fit film literally every day and do all the projects that we're doing here on the Time Teller brand. So, you know, things that keep me up at night podcast, we're uploading weekly, sometimes twice a week uh, over there. So check out the podcast link in the description below. Check out T3 Time to Drive. By the time you see this, there might be a new episode uploaded. We're doing a week, uh, or, or excuse me, a week. We're doing once a month uh, over on T3 Time to Drive because car content just takes a whole lot of, of time and effort to film and something's got to give between the podcast and, and the main channel and the shop. So bear with me. Thank you for supporting all the content and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And remember I didn't invent time I just tell it not about you but this thing's pretty dang complicated man you should have seen the booklet on this thing it's like a freaking bible or something